of the myriad of Star Wars games to release since the 80s, Demolition might be one of the strangest. Capitalising on Loxoflux's previous experience with Vigilante 8, this one traded lightsabers and Jedi powers for explosive vehicular combat. It's an odd direction to take, and looks less flattering when you consider it runs on the same engine that powered the developer's previous work, which you may assume means this one is a lazy reskin. But once you scratch beneath the surface, rock solid mechanics and some unique quirks ensure this one is enjoyable for both fans of Star Wars and explosive combat, even if the game would have greatly benefited from more content. With the Galactic Empire outlawing pod racing, Jabba the Hutt has invented a new kind of sport, which replaces high speed racing with explosive battles. Thus, Demolition sets the stage for vehicular combat, which is in the same wheelhouse as Vigilante 8, as you drive around compact arenas looking to wreck all your opponents. Controls feel solid, even with the myriad of vehicle types including tanks, pod racing vehicles and even a beastly Rancor, as all can be accelerated with the A button while the triggers fire the weapons. Speaking of which, each vehicle comes with one unique laser weapon, while secondary fire can be found on the maps, including thermal detonators, tractor beams and concussion missiles. The maps are also well designed taking you from the destructible markets of Moz Eisley to the jungles of Yavin 4, complete with temples and a golden boulder which coats the player upon touch. Overall, it's a fun time which fans of the genre will likely enjoy. There were a few unique quirks which granted Demolition an identity outside of Luxoflux's previous games. Attacks can be charged up to 4 levels depending how much weapon power you have. Striking an enemy with a level 2 or 3 charge will add to a meter on the side, which then can be cashed in by nailing a max level attack. After draining an opponent's health, you can also perform a final blow by charging both attacks to full rewarding even more credits. This little wrinkle adds a thought process to each attack, which spices up the traditional action. It plays a key role in tournament mode, a series of matches against more opponents each round. While completing each will reward an ending scene, or a losing one should you fail, earning 10,000 credits in each tournament unlocks a slew of characters to use. These are a bit of a riot including the aforementioned Rancor, several iconic characters of the series in disguise, and Darth Maul with a dual lightsaber vehicle which is equal parts silly and amazing. Not everything is perfect, unfortunately. There are definitely some balancing issues with the roster, with certain characters showing a clearer advantage over others. Boba Fett may be the worst offender, with his small stature, nimble pace and charge stun attack making it easy to wipe out enemies. Meanwhile, Tia and Gia's toe attack is borderline useless by comparison. Power-ups are also quite unbalanced, with some being easily exploited by both players and the AI to the point of frustration, such as the tractor beam. The other issue is that, at least on the default settings, the damage output of attacks feels a little too light, resulting in matches that feel a tad bloated. Recharging stations for shield and armour add to this, though at least you can change the damage output similarly to Vigilante 8, and putting it up to high adds a quicker, more engaging pace. While unlocking these characters is quite fun, it doesn't take very long to mow through tournament mode several times, as each just consists of 4 matches. A few other modes are present too, including traditional battle, high stakes which allows you to bet before matches, and hunter droid which serves as a target practice of sorts, 
but each doesn't feel substantial enough to add much more time. Luckily, much of the content here supports multiplayer, with some modes offering four player skirmishes, which proves a treat. You can play the entire tournament mode with a second player, and even partake in some gambling with the high stakes mode, all of which prove enjoyable for the odd session. It probably wouldn't be your first pick for multiplayer gaming on the Dreamcast, but it's definitely got enough options and tweaks to offer something for those four ports. Demolition would arrive on the Dreamcast at the same time as the PlayStation version, and because it's a straight use of the Vigilante 8 engine, a lot of the quirks carry over from Second Offense's Dreamcast port. That's to say, the bumping quality for the assets such as textures and character models is good, and performance generally holds steady at 60 frames per second outside of some explosive moments. Ills like pop-in and less attractive elements carry over, but it's a good upgrade. The sound fares very well too. The effects are potent as you'd expect from Luxoflux, albeit with more iconic auditory parts like the laser sounds of Star Wars and a plentiful amount of voice clips work well here. But the music is the highlight, mixing traditional Williams-esque touches with some of that funky spirit from Vigilante 8, resulting in a distinctive and catchy accompaniment, which is well worth seeking out, even if you don't take interest in the game. Summarising Star Wars Demolition some decades after launch is weird, as it's technically a cash grab effort, but one that throws enough cool ideas at the wall that it proves worthwhile enough for enthusiasts of both the license and genre. Make no mistake, you'll smell Vigilante 8's scent immediately, but this also ensures the vehicle combat is sturdy and enjoyable. Coupled with a slew of goofy unlockables, substantial multiplayer modes, and a pleasant presentation, it offers a decent time. Maybe with a bit more content and some refinement in certain areas, this one might have been a classic of the genre. But as it stands, those aching for more vehicular combat on their Dreamcast should check this one out. 